Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. If you'd like any of your Ramadan related questions answered this month, you can email us at questions at amau.org. وَأَقُولُوا فِي الْقُرْآنِ مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ آيَاتُهُ فَهُوَ الْكَارِيمُ الْمُنْزَالُ وَأَقُولُوا قَالَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ جَلَالُهُ وَالْمُصْطَفَ الْهَادِي وَلَا أَتَأَوَّالُ The question we're going to be answering today is as follows. What is the proof that I can hold a mushaf whilst praying Salat al And the second part of the same question, if I am holding the mushaf whilst praying, where do I place my hands? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Lahu alhamdul hasan Wa thanau aljameel Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu Wahdahu la sharika la Wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa nabiyyana Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi Wa tabi'ina lahum bi ihsanin ila yawmi al-deen amma ba'd So inshallah ta'ala this question bi idhni ilayhi al-kareem I believe it consists of two things The first part of the question consists of uh, Reading from the mushaf uh, Or using the mushaf whilst praying and the second part of the question, inshallah ta'ala, is where do you put your hand uh, if you are allowed to hold the mushaf? The scholars, they have two views regarding using the mushaf in the prayer. There are two views. There's the view of the Jumhur al-Ulama, the overwhelming majority of scholars who are of the opinion that it's permissible. And you have the qawl of the Hanafiyyah and also uh, the Zahiriyyah like Ibn Hazm and others who hold the opinion that it's not allowed. So inshallah ta'ala what I'm going to do is I'm going to present the, 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 the two views and then inshallah ta'ala I'm going to mention which of those two views seem strongest to myself. The first view, they say that it's permissible because this is the action of the early pious predecessors. Al-Imam al-Bukhari narrated in his sahih mu'allaqan Al-Imam al-Bukhari narrated in his sahih uh, mu'allaqan that our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she had a slave boy called Dhaqwan. This slave boy of Aisha named Dhaqwan, he used to lead our mother Aisha in the prayer, uh, min al -mushaf. but he used to recite from the Mus'haf. He used to read from the Mus'haf, fi Ramadan, the narration mentions, in the month of Ramadan. So this narration clearly and categorically shows us that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the wife of the Prophet, she would be led by her slave boy and he would read from the Mus'haf and she would pray behind him. Radiallahu ta'ala anha. And Ibn Wahb rahimahullah, he said that Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri said, Kana khiyaruna yaqra'una fil masahifi fi Ramadana. Ibn Wahb, and some of the times it's transmitted as um, uh, Zuhri was asked, Muhammad Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri was asked about a person reading from the Mus'haf uh, whilst praying uh, in the Taraweeh or the Qiyam. And Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri said, Kana khiyaruna, our righteous ones, our noble ones, they used to recite from uh, fil masahif fi Ramadana. In the month of Ramadan, they used to read from the masahif, yani from the mushaf. And um, Ibn Sahnun, who was from the uh, Maliki, Malikiyya, he said that Al-Imam Malik rahimahullah he said, لا بأس بأن يأمر الإمام It is no harm for an imam to lead the people uh, in the salah from a mushaf in Ramadan and even in voluntary prayers. And Ibn al-Qasim, he said that Al-Imam Malik كريه ذلك في الفريضة Al-Imam Malik didn't like it to be done in the obligatory prayers. يعني according to Al-Imam Malik, there's no harm for an imam to lead the people uh, in the salah, reading from a mushaf uh, whether it be Qiyamul Layl or whether it be any other voluntary prayers, any supererogatory prayers, Imam Malik had no problem with that. Like an Imam Malik was against the idea of the Imam reading from the Mus'haf for the Salatul Faridah, the obligatory prayers. He saw that to be haram and not allowed. But the term kariha, according to the Salaf, meant haram. Yani they didn't like it. They, yani they saw it to be haram. Okay? Also, Al Imam al Nawi from the Shafi'iyah, he mentioned that if the Imam reads from the Mus'haf, لم تبطل صلاته. His salat is his salat is not باطل. And his salat is not باطل. سواء كان يحفظه whether he knows the Quran and he's a حافظ أم لا whether he's not memorized the Quran. بل يجب عليه ذلك إذا لم يحفظ الفاتحة. Rather, it's obligatory if he has not memorized فاتحة to read from the Mus'haf. It's obligatory because فاتحة is a pillar in the prayer and he must read from the Mus'haf. ما لا يتم الواجب إلا به فواجب. 
whatever the obligatory act cannot be done without it, it becomes obligatory. Yani if you have to read Fatiha in the prayer and you can't, unless you read from the Mus'haf, then reading from the Mus'haf becomes obligatory. Nawawi went on to say, and this is in, this statement, by, by the way, from an Imam Nawawi is found in his Majmu', which is the Sharah of Al Muhaddab al Ibn al Shirazi. Nawawi mentions, Rahimahullah, walaw qalaba, even if he turns over the awraq and the pages of the Mus'haf, sometimes in the prayer. And if it's small Mus'haf, where he has to turn over the pages, some of the Imams, they've got big Masahif. And in those big Masahif, the whole entire Qiyam, he doesn't have to turn over the pages. And I've seen that in Egypt. Some of the Imams in Egypt, they have uh, like four or five pages in, in, in a big page. He doesn't have to turn over the pages. But what about if he has a small Mus'haf where he has to keep turning over the pages, turning over the pages? Now what we're saying, it doesn't harm at all. There's no problem this. And he said, this is our Madhab and the Madhab of the uh, Imalik and Abu Yusuf and others. And I think, if I'm not wrong, this is the Muftabihi in the Madhab of Imam Muhammad. If I'm not wrong. Now we have the other party, the other group, who have, um, who have the opinion that uh, it is not permissible and it is not allowed for a person to uh, read from a Mus'haf. It is not allowed. And this is a strong view according to Al-Imam Abu Hanifa. Abu Hanifa holds the opinion that it's not permissible. Okay? He doesn't believe it. Like his own student Abu Yusuf disagrees with him on this. Uh, disagrees with him on this. And I think even, even Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani disagrees with him on this. Ala kulli hal, and Ibn Hazm min al-Zahiriyya, he holds the opinion of Abu, Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, which is that it's not allowed. And the argument is that there's too much movement. When the person has to turn over the pages, there's too many movement, movements that are being done, which is not permissible in the Salah. And they said this is uh, not allowed. And the response to that is very simple, which is that uh, we know our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam كان يصلي وهو حامل أمامة بنت زينب بنت زينب بنت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم That our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he actually prayed and he was carrying alayhi salatu wasalam أمامة بنت زينب he was carrying her sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you know carrying a child is more of a movement than turning over the pages in the Mus'haf another argument of theirs was that um, the Sahabas, they said, Kunna We used to greet each other in the prayer. And whilst we were praying, we would greet each other, we would say salam alaykum to each other. And then they said, Faqila lana, it was then said to us, Inna fi salati la that the salah, or the person who's in the prayer, is preoccupied. He can't be greeting other people. This is their argument. Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and Ibn Umar generated this hadith. Yani the person who's praying is preoccupied. There are no other things in which he can distract himself with. He cannot be focusing on other things. And this is also the argument that they brought forward. But the response to this is very easy and simple. And what we say to them is that our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha when she did what she did. And also when Ibn Wahhab mentions that Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri said Kana fil fi Ramadan. This is something you could say that in tashara fi zaman al-sahaba it's something that spread at the time of the pious predecessors, يعني, at the time of the Sahabas, and we have nobody disagreeing with it or objecting to it. So we could say that this is something that they agreed upon, upon amongst themselves, that this is not a problem. And reading from the Mus'haf is not a thing that's going to preoccupy you away from the Salah. It's actually what's going to make you focus on the Salah by reading from the Mus'haf. There was a time I used to hold the opinion that it wasn't allowed to read from the Mus'haf in the Salah to Taraweeh. But that which seems apparent and strongest to me now, well, ilmu indallahi, and knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that it's permissible to read from the Mus'haf. It is allowed to read from the Mus'haf in Ramadan, uh, in the voluntary prayers, as long as it's not the obligatory prayers. The obligatory prayers, The obligatory prayers, the one who knows the most Quran should lead the people. And the one that doesn't know should stand back. Um, the second part of the question is that where does the person place their hand? The person should keep their hand on their chest and the one in which they are holding their mushaf, they should hold it like this. So the mushaf is in this hand and your hand is on here. When you want to turn it, you can hold it with two hands to turn it over, but then your, your left hand goes back, to, back on your chest and you hold it with your right hand and your hand stays on top of the other hand. And if 
you have a place where you can put it in front of you, then it is permissible. And if you can hold it somewhere in front of you, uh, then that is also permissible. Uh, if you can place something in front of you that can hold a mushaf before you, that is even better. Uh, knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, a shaytan. And Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa tubilayh.